Hi, I'm David the Bruce, and this is Steal This Show, where we show everything in the public domain. One of the series that has slipped into the public domain is a very important television series from the early 1950s called Annie Oakley, starring Gail Davis. Ah, such an important show. Let me tell you just a little bit. Back in about 1953, I guess it was, Gene Autry, who had Flying A Productions, um, had been doing several... Um, cowboy movies, cowboy shows. Well, actually, he'd been the singing cowboy in the, on, in the movies. And uh, Gail Davis, who's Annie Oakley in this, was actually in a few of, of his um, um, motion pictures as a cowgirl, you know. Well, in 1953, Gene Autry, this amazing producer, and, by the way, later owner of the uh, Dodgers uh, baseball team, um, decided that what the world needed was a female cowgirl to star in a show. And um, so, yeah, so who to pick? Well, as it turned out, Gail Davis, who had been on some of his movies, and had for, well, she had done so many cowboy pictures, even with Roy Rogers and people like that, um, that she got um, picked. And uh, when she came out, this, this series was epic. There was only one problem which led to its demise, and that was they couldn't find sponsors for it. Who would sponsor a show with a single female in 1954? I mean, the advertisers are scratching their heads. What woman would like this? Well, quite a few, because she impacted so many lives. Young girls that grew up and claimed their own lives because of this show. Or, I should say, in part because of this show. I know there's other influences. This is powerful and this is amazing so it's my privilege to bring you again yet another episode of Annie Oakley starring Gail Davis Bullseye Annie Oakley hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding And suspense. bracelets well you didn't have to kill a man what's all this about i don't get it well, you will you used to be joe carter's partner didn't you your name's ed lawson you seem to know all the answers well, i know a few of them you see i'm joe's brother sam that's right and joe and me got split up after that diablo job i made it to red rock and that hombre picked me up yeah. joe's in diablo right now in jail <laughs> Kid, where's your uncle? He took a posse out to look for the guy that helped you rob the express office. Ah, uh, don't tell me he left you in charge here. Me, Annie, and Uncle Luke's deputy. We'll make out. What you got here? Chicken and dumplings and blueberry pie. Home made. That sister of yours make it? She sure did, boy. Annie's the best cook in the whole world. Hmm. I hear she's pretty good with a six gun, too. Nobody's ever outshot her yet, and a lot of fellas have tried. Good shot. <laughs> Good cook. <laughs> you know, some kid, when I get out of here, I think I'll marry her. A lot of fellas have tried that, too. 
Care for another piece of pie, Lofty? Well, I... Ah, uh, no, I guess not, thanks, honey. What's the matter? Don't you like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very nice. Very nice? It's delicious. I went out and picked those blueberries myself and then spent the whole morning baking that pie, and you say it's very nice. Well, that's what I mean, Annie. It's very good. Oh, the trouble with you, Lofty Craig, is that you don't show any enthusiasm about anything. Oh, yes, I do. It's well, just that sometimes I can't say the things the way I want to. I mean... All right, Charlie? Sure, Annie. I think so. I just got a little confused. What happened? Oh, it was that crazy Pete. Every time he comes to town, he gets roaring down drunk and thinks he's a bad man. Yeah, I know. Well, I guess he wouldn't really harm anybody. Oh, no, Charlie. Pete's all right when he's sober. I guess he gets kind of lonesome living up in that old shack all by himself. This is just his way of blowing off steam. Now, get on home and stay out of trouble. You ought to be ashamed of yourself shooting at a blind man. I was only having a little fun. I didn't know it was Charlie. I love Charlie. I couldn't see him so good. Yeah, I know. Most people can't when they drink as much as you do. Now, come on. Get going. Here. Is there anything you want? Oh, yes, there is something I want, Annie. Something I've wanted to give you for a long time. I want you to have this. Oh, Charlie, no. I made this with my own hands, lock, stock, and barrel. But it's your favorite rifle. Well, you're my favorite girl. Besides, I have no more use for it. I haven't fired a gun since, well, since my accident five years ago. A gun isn't much good to a blind man. Of course, I can still repair them. There isn't a spring or a screw I can't put where it belongs. I know that. Thanks, Charlie. I'll always keep this. Hello, Lofty. Telegram just came, Annie. They caught that other express office robber. They did? Where? Yeah, way over in Red Rock. Huh. Deputy Marshall's on his way here with him. A couple men just rode up. One of them is handcuffed. Sheriff McTavish? No, I am his deputy, Lofty Craig. He's out with a posse. Well, this is Anna Yoki, the sheriff's niece. Well, uh, pleased to meet you, man. I'm Deputy Marshal Rod Williams. This is the man we've been looking for. I'll take him off your hands. Yeah. My name's Tag. Glad to meet you. Well, howdy, Tag. Prisoner giving you any trouble, Marshal? Nobody gives me too much trouble, man. Unless it happens to be a real pretty young lady. You probably haven't had anything to eat. I'll fix you something. Oh, no, no. I uh, wouldn't want to put you in all that bother, Miss... Annie, it's no bother at all. Oh, of course not. No bother at all. Well, if you insist, Miss Annie, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. He's quite a guy, Annie Lofty. I think Annie kind of likes him. Don't you have somewhere to go? Nope. You don't mind my saying so, Miss Annie. This is the tastiest meal I've had in a long time. I think you're full of blarney, Marshal. Oh, well, I mean it. Beats me how a young lady with so much charm and beauty can be such a good cook. I think I'll go down to the barber shop. I'll be back in an hour or two. I'll take the new prisoner's lunch. Oh, no. You've done enough already. You let me take that, huh? Here's your chow, Ed. Looks mighty good. What's the plan, Sam? You just sit tight. I'll have you out by morning. Have you got any money? Well, no, haven't you? What about that express company job? We didn't get nothing. We blew this safe. But they got me before we'd get the dough out. 
Well, that's fine. Won't get far without money. Listen, Sam. That express company safe is still busted. So they have to put their money in the one here in the sheriff's office. Now, on Saturday night, there'll be over $10,000 in it. I can open it with a screwdriver. Well, that settles it, then. We stay right here till Saturday night. Now, be careful of that girl. She's plenty smart. And she can make a six-gun talk in ten languages. <laughs> Don't you worry about Annie. I already got her eating right out of my head. Hi, Dad. Where's Annie? She went riding with the marshal. Oh, she did. You know something, Lofty? He's a funny guy. Huh? Oh, what do you mean, funny? I don't know. There's something about him. I don't know if I like him or if I don't. Well, Annie seems to like him pretty well. Yeah, but a girl don't always see a guy like he really is. Especially if she's stuck on him. Oh, that's crazy. Annie isn't stuck on Williams. I wouldn't say that. It was her idea going for the ride. That's Antelope Valley down there. And in the springtime, it has a beautiful green velvet carpet with wildflowers by the million. <laughs> oh, see that stream over there? Mm-hmm. Gee, I remember when I used to love to ride over there early in the morning and watch the deer come to drink. Deer? Mm-hmm. That sounds like good shooting. Speaking of shooting, that's my favorite sport. You see that metal lark? Don't. It's only a bird. Well, it's still alive and it hasn't done anybody any harm. <laughs> You're a strange little girl, Miss Annie. I thought you liked to shoot. Well, there's a difference between liking to shoot and liking to kill. Killing's just part of the pattern in life. It's a natural law. The strong kill off the weak. I don't think I like that, Mr. Williams. It's been going on a long time. Big animals kill little animals. If the little animals get in the way. I think we'd better start for home. All right. I'll tie him off, Miss Annie. I'm going to stop in at the store. I brought some stuff for you. Oh, oh, thanks. Thanks very much. You're welcome, John. Now we're in trouble. I've been recognized. Who saw you? A fellow I knew a long time ago. He's running a gun shop down the street. You sure he knew you? Of course I'm sure. He stared right at me. We better get going before he starts talking. No. Now we're gonna stay right here. He won't get a chance to talk. Hello, Charlie. Remember me? Why, the voice is familiar. Is it? That's right, Sam Carter. Sam Carter. It's been a long time, Sam. I wouldn't have known you. You knew me. You were staring right at me a little while ago. I didn't see you. You saw me all right. I'm blind, Sam. I've been blind for five years. Blind? <laughs> then you wouldn't have known. What do you mean? No matter, Charlie. But it's too bad. It's too bad you know now. I tell you, he shot Charlie in cold blood. All right, Lofty, what are you going to do about it? No one but a skunk could shoot a blind man, and we don't like skunks. You know how we all felt about Charlie. Now, wait a minute, men. No one thought more of Charlie than I did. He was almost like a father to me. But two wrongs don't make a right, and we don't even know for sure who did it. We all know who did it. No one but Pete had reason to harm him. You saw yourself what Pete did out there in the street? Pete was drunk. He didn't realize what he was doing. You know, he always likes to raise cane when he's had a few, but that doesn't mean that he's going to... Why do we stand here talking for? You know Pete did it. We all know Pete did it. Well, you're all wrong, because I don't think Pete's guilty. Well, we think he is. All right. But he's going to get a fair trial. I'll ride out and get Pete and bring him back here. We'll go along with you. Right, fellas? Right. Yeah. Only we won't bring him back here. Leastwise, not till we're through with him. Hey, Annie! A lot more men are coming up the street, and they've got a rope. Stall him off as long as you can, Lofty. I'll ride out and try and get Pete out of the way. All right, Annie. Look after things here, will you, Marshal? Sure. Sam, I don't like the looks of this whole thing. Me neither. I think it's a good time to get out of here. We're going to stay until Saturday night. And take these, just in case. Where 
do you think you're going? With you! See anything? I see a cloud of dust in the distance. It could be them. Well, hello, Andy. Howdy, Tag. Hi. What are you folks doing way up here? Charlie Wright's been shot. Charlie? You mean shot a purpose? Who did it? They think you did, Pete. Me? And they're coming up here after you, with a rope. Now, wait a minute. There's no time to wait for anything, Pete. You've got to get out of here and fast. Well, I don't know why I should get out of here. I never run away from nothing in my life. Especially something I didn't do. Well, you can't tell that mob that. They mean business. You've got to hide out until we can prove who did it. Well, I don't like it. It ain't right. Oh, please hurry, Pete. We haven't got time to argue. You've just got to find a place to hide. Well, there's an old mine shaft over on top yonder mountain. I don't expect nobody knows it's there. Well, come on, let's go. Wait till I get my gear. Here we are. The old mine shaft is over the hill in the rocks. Gosh, no one would ever find that. Now, you just stay put, you hear me? And then when things settle down and everybody's cooled off, we'll let you know. Well, I don't mind telling you, I don't like it a bit. Why, I ought to be down talking to them men that's accusing me of doing the murder. Why, for two cents, I... You I'd... just stay right where you are unless you want to dangle on the end of a rope. Come on, Tag. We don't want to run into that mob. No, we'll go down the back way. Gonna do it. I ain't no coward. What I need's a drink. <laughs> yes, sir. Clean as a whistle. There's nobody in there. Well, he's not in his cabin or nowhere around. We've covered every inch. He's lit out. I reckon that proves he's guilty. Well, we better take the other tray and double back. Taggy's dead. Who is he? I don't know. He's been shot. Listen, Tag. Listen carefully. The Morgan place is only about a mile from here. I want you to ride over there and send a telegram with their phone. Sure, Annie. Who's the telegram to? I'll send it to the United States Marshal at Red Rock. Say, uh, wire physical description of Marshal Williams. Sign Sheriff Diablo. Sure, Annie, but the man that's staying with us is Deputy Marshal Williams. He said he was. I don't think so, Tag. I think this man is Williams. According to the label in this coat, it was bought in Red Rock. And look at this, Tag. You can see he's worn a badge, and you can see where the sun has faded the material all around it. I bet that guy killed him and took his badge. Yeah. Hurry, Tag. I'll wait here. Oh, Tag, uh, pick up Mr. Morgan's buckboard, will you, and bring it back? We'll need it to take the body into town. Sure, Annie. Well, no use going any further. Looks like he got clean away. All right, fellas. Let's head back to town. I'm going back to the office. You run on over to the telegraph office and wait for an answer to my wire. Okay. I see you brought in the body. You found Pete, huh? It wasn't Pete's body. Well, who is it? I don't know. It was some stranger. He'd been shot. You have any idea who it is or who did it? 
Oh. I better take a look. Here's the answer to the telegram, Aunt. Annie. I, uh, I sent a wire to my cousin. His wife is very ill, and... Go ahead. Open it. Oh, yes, of course. I hope your cousin's wife is feeling better. Oh, he's much better. You're all upset. I'll read it for you. Drop it, mister. Whatever your name is. Carter, Miss Annie. Sam Carter. All right, get back here. Oh, got a gun in the kid's back, Annie. You want me to let him have it? Uh, if he doesn't want anything like that to happen, Joe. Here. Open it up. It's too big for his britches. I think I'll let him have it anyway. Oh, hold on there. There's been enough killing around here already. So you killed Charlie too, huh? Had to. He recognized me. Open it up. That's it. Come on, kid. Come on. Got you. What goes on around here? You're staying right here. You don't seem to be on our side anymore. Come on, Joe. had a gun. I've got one. You? Yes, ma'am. Men, I'm warning you, every one of you will answer to the charge of murder. You keep out of this, Lofty. We'll take that chance. Come on, let's get him down to the tree. Let's go. Just a minute, fellas. Now you'll have to see my attorney, Alan. Larry, the keys are over there on the floor. Hurry up and let me out of here. Come on, Larry, hurry. Come on. Both of you are locking you up for your own good. Tag, you stay here. the wrong man. The one who's supposed to be the marshal is Joe Carter's brother, and they got away. Here, Lofty, I'm sorry. I think they're headed for Ludlow Pass. If you hurry, you can catch them. Yeah, you go take a look at it. Okay. But there's not much chance anybody coming up here. Smoke over there? The other side of the hill? Sure, looks like it. Yeah, that smoke, all right. Where is smoke? Ha! Sam, here comes a mob of them. They spotted our fire.
Carter, come up with your hands up. Sure, Miss Annie. Sure. Well, I guess you win, Miss Annie. We got him, Annie! How's the pie loft? Terrific, Annie. Terrific and delicious. You know something? I don't see how a girl as pretty as you are can be such a wonderful cook. <laughs> Careful, son. The last man who made that remark got nowhere. <laughs> <laughs>